Good morning, everybody. It's good to be with you again on a Sunday, good old Sunday morning. A little bl a blurry, a little cloudy outside, but it's still a good day of the Lord. It's good to be alive again. All right. Well, before, I, before we get started with the message and all, let me just say, I don't know what all is going to take place in the near future. Uh, according to our president, he said this is a church is essential and that we all should be in church today. However, the Lord didn't say that. So we're kind of moving with the spirit of the Lord and how the Lord moves with us. You know, I, I, I kind of feel like I know what's happening in a lot of our cities. For I remember I lived in New York City for three years. And uh, I lived in an apartment building that probably had 15 or 16 floors. I know we lived on the 13th floor. So I understand. It gives me a good understanding of how the virus could easily be contracted from people to people living in a building like that because we always we always all on the elevator together and there's no way you could uh, avoid all that living on the 13th floor sometimes the elevators would go out and we had to walk six, 13 flights up to get to our apartment that was a long walk up some stairs tell me i tell you uh, but however i was a very young fellow around 19 years old so we ran up the steps we had fun running up 13 flights. Sometimes we'd walk up just to, just in spite of it because of the challenge that it presented to us. But anyway, uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the near future, how this virus is going to react and, and all this kind of thing. I don't know about, uh, about testing. Several of us need to be, probably need to be tested. And we don't know how all that's going to work out. But anyway, Whatever happens, it will happen. We just have to do the best that we can, live the best that we know how to live with the, with the directions that we get from those that are over us in the Lord. I take my, my main key comes from my state overseer, whatever he decides to do. And then again, all, some of that is still left up to me as pastor as to how we uh, do business at our local church. I understand our, our west is more open, and some of them have large parking lots where they can have service outside and, and not be a burden to anyone else. So I, I can understand all of that as well. But anyway, we'll have to live the best that we know how to live and do the things that we know to do so that we can survive in our area. I miss you guys, and I know you, we miss each other. And, we can't hug and kiss each other and all those kinds of things. But who knows what God's going to do in the future. There may come a time where we'll be all get back together again and we can uh, socialize together and have a good time. But anyway, in the meantime, well, you may want to think about how we can set some boundaries. Uh, that's my topic this morning is setting boundaries. And as a church, we may need to come together as to how we can set some boundaries when we do get back together, uh, even in sitting, uh, how we're going to do service when we get back together. We might not be allowed to take have but a certain number of people uh, as we get back together. But anyway, you'd be thinking about uh, boundaries and how we can set some boundaries and how when we do get back together. All right. Okay. I think that's about all I think about right now but if you think about it and if you come up with some ideas that's okay you let me know give me a you have my phone number you have my you can text me I, I love text I love reading text I don't like talking on the phone I can tell you that now I just don't like talking on the phone when I'm talking to people I like to look in the eyeballs when I look in the eyeballs I can tell if they're telling me a story or if they're being truthful to me <laughs> So I don't like talking on the phone. I'd rather text you than talk on the phone with you, okay? But anyway, we can communicate by that way if you want to. All right. Okay, let me get started with my, my message. Let me pray first. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, 
Lord, I thank you again for allowing us to this access that we have, that we can get your word out to your people. Sometimes, Lord, this might be better than in some situations because there were some people not able to get out to the house of worship and where we can worship together in the house of prayer. But, Lord, we thank you for you providing a way, even in times like this, that we can share your word with your people. Bless the word that you've given me this morning, setting boundaries. Help us, Lord, that we be able to do what it is that you would have us to do in this last and even this thing. I thank you so much for the call of God that you have placed upon my life. If it wasn't for the call of God, I probably would have gave, given up a long time ago and walked away from ministry. But because of the call of God, that nobody, nobody understands that if you're not a minister. God hasn't called you to preach. He had our pastor. And matter of fact, calling to preach and calling to pastor is two different things. And it, 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 everybody don't have the burden on them to be a pastor. But I thank you for that that you placed upon me, and I, I enjoy it, and I thank you knowing that you're with me in whatever I do. I appreciate that, and I ask you to continue to guide us and lead us, Lord, in, in the direction that you would have us to go in this last and even day. If you do these things for us, Lord, we'll be so careful to give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor. All shall be yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Can you put up with some of my singing? Well, I got this little tune. I like to try to sing a little bit of it. one of my favorite songs uh, was by Sean Mitchell. <clears throat> I climbed up to the highest mountain, looked all around, I couldn't find nobody. I went down into the deepest valley, looked all around down there, couldn't find nobody. I went across the deep blue sea, couldn't find one to compare. Your grace, your love, your mercy, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody, I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody can heal like you can. Oh, most holy one, you are the great I am. Awesome in all your ways and mighty is your hand. You are he who carried out redemption plan. You are he who carried out redemption plan. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Nobody can heal like you can. Almost holy one, you are the great I am. Awesome in all your ways and mighty is your hand. You are here to carry out redemption plan. You are here to carry out redemption plan. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody greater than you. Yeah. All right, that's my little favorite song. Worshipful Sean Mitch is one of the guys that I can imitate a little bit. <laughs> Amen.
Okay, now back to my message. Setting boundaries are very necessary. I believe that Jesus set boundaries. Sometimes when people struggle to be careful givers, cheerful givers, in their helping of others, they become tired, stressed, or burned out. Problems with setting boundaries are a main reason why many pastors and leaders experience the overwhelming ministry stress and eventually burn out. I kind of know what that's like. I've been close to that. Been very close to burn out. Sometimes you can run and do all that you can and you don't take care of yourself the necessary way that you should and it, it, you run yourself into the ground and that's what they call burnout. In every walk of life, you must have boundaries. If you own a piece of property, you have to set boundaries, line, or mark that to know where your property line stop, starts and stops. I have a piece of property my own, of my, myself down in South Carolina. And I was thinking the other day, I don't even know where my property line starts or stop. I got to get somebody to, what you call that? Survey. survey my property and set, I want them to put stakes, stakes in the ground so I'll know where it's in and where it stops. I haven't done that, but I need to do that so I'll know where, where that stops. If perhaps one day I might go back that way and live, who knows what the Lord's going to, who knows what time going to present, how time going to present itself in the future as far as our lives is concerned. But let's be clear of one thing before we go on. I am not Jesus. Please don't slap me or spit in my face or whip me. I don't think I can take it like Jesus did. Jesus had a far more stress, far more pressure, and far more responsibility than any of us, and yet he remained relaxed, joyful, and generous with people. I'm not there yet. I'm still, I still got to work on that part. Sometimes I, I lose my, my cool, as they say, and I explode just a little bit. See, that old man, he's still in me. I still got a lot of Alonzo Crawford, Lily Mae Crawford, uh, Aunt, uh, Grandma Pet, uh, Grandpa <laughs> Preston uh, in me. So I have to do like the Apostle Paul say, I'm, I'm still working on me. I'm, I'm still working on me. I try to die daily. I work on this guy every day. As much as I work on him, he still sometimes, he stands up and get in a knot and, and don't act the way he ought to act all the time. Ain't that right, Chris? If she don't want to say amen. Amen. <laughs> we, he, he models, Jesus, he models and mediates for us living God's rhythm of grace. While setting boundaries is important, you see, I know me. I set them for me and my sanity. I tell my wife, I am a realist, not a pessimist. I am who I am. Can't be nobody else. I have to be who I am. Don't make me no more than who I am. Saved by grace, I have been forgiven of all my sins. Some I don't even know how God himself forgave me, but he did. Because I wasn't a very good person all my life. But I thank God, in spite of myself, he still loved me and he still was able to bless and keep me. Listen, and if you have been forgot, forgiven, you have been set free too. Personal boundaries are what define your identity. They are like the property lines around a home. This is my property, and that is not my property. This is me and what I value. And 
am good at, this is what I am good at, what I believe, what I need, or what I feel. And that, that I am, that is not me. I really try to treat people like I want them to treat me. I don't always do that, but I, I do try. Good boundaries help you to care for others because you have a, a stable foundation to operate from and are not distracted or just you're depleted by personal insecurities or blind spots. That's why it is not selfish or unloving to have boundaries and take care of yourself. There are some jobs I definitely could not have done well at. Teacher, doctor, or nowadays even raising kids, raising children. I pray for all of you who have these responsibilities. I do. If you're raising a kid nowadays, God bless you and heaven smile upon you. And I really pray for you because you got a job on your hand. See, in my days, my mama could smack me in the mouth. I, my lip, that's probably why my lips are as big as they are now. You see how pretty Because I probably got smacked in them quite a bit. But you can't do that anymore. We live in a time where you, you can't do that. You have to put up with them regardless of what they do. Matter of fact, they're probably going to whoop some of you. <laughs> but you see, I would have probably been one of them that I've been in jail. <laughs> because I tell you something, sometimes I think about now. If my mother knew, <laughs> had the same kinds of things going on in the world today that we, that we have now, I'm sure my mom would have went to jail. <laughs> because some of those times she whooped me for the old and the new. <laughs> But anyway, it was good for me. And I thank God for her even, even now. But listen, I, I, I seriously pray for you that's still raising kids. I try just to be honest with myself first, then with others. I cannot walk on eggshells for fear of upsetting someone. Usually, people who minister to others as pastors or counselors are sensitive, hearted, and prone to take on others problems. If they don't have a clear personal boundaries and limits, they get weighed down and walked on. Eventually, they start having problems with anger, resentment, stress overload, or burnout. Like many Christians today, or Christian leaders, should I say, have a feeling of being guilty if they set boundaries. I thought I had to say yes to what people felt they needed, what I felt that people needed from me. I tried to please people and make them happy. I never wanted anybody to be disappointed or upset with me. To me, it seems selfish or not nice to say no to people with hurts and needs. Sometimes you just have to say no. I know some folks in my life that don't know how to say no. Look at me. Read my lips. No. You get it? Let's say it again. No. Yeah, got to learn how to say no. Okay? There's nothing wrong with saying no. Let me try to end with this first Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brothers, Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is lively, whatsoever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there be anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Here's where I am trying to live to the best of my abilities. Ephesians 5, 1 through 4. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering sacrifice to God. Sexual immorality and all impurity and covetousness must not even be named among you 
as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. I set boundaries with my children when they were very young. I call it breaking their constitution. That is a part of training up a child in the way he or she should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. I think my kids remember. I, I, I took them to church sometime. I sit them on the bench with me and my wife. And sometimes some of the members want to come and get your baby, you know. Let me hold the baby. But there was times when, this, when the preacher was preaching, they had to sit between us. And I had a, a real good, strong middle finger. And they get me acting up, and I could pop up with that finger. And then I look at them, I said, don't you cry. And I dare them to even cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that was a little bit of, of child abuse, but they got the message, and they they knew how to sit and behave themselves. So there are ways to do it. If you don't listen, if you don't do it while they're real young, and there's no need of messing with them when they get, become teenagers. They are out of hand, like I was. I was. I was out of hand when I became a teenager. My mama couldn't. She, well, my mama didn't really try to do anything with me. I, I was the man of the house. I, I, when I, was, I was the man of the house real early in my life when I was young because I was the only boy uh, in the family that was at home with my mother. So I was the little man of the house. And I kind of ran things. And When they first got an automobile, I was the man that drove the car. And it became my car, you know, at 16, which was real bad. Didn't need a car. I don't think the kid need a car. 16 years old and he's still in high school. They don't need no car. Because if they were wild like me, they won't do no homework. They stop doing the homework and they get in all kinds of troubles. Because trouble waits for you. You, you know the one thing? You don't have to look for trouble because trouble will find you. It will always find you. I'm going to end with this scripture here. The Bible says in Luke 9.23, and 24. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. You get that? Take up his cross daily. You can't just take up the cross one day and then drop the cross down, but you got to take up the cross daily if you're going to follow and follow me, he said. And the 24th verse says, for whosoever will save his life, shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life, for my sake, the same shall be saved. See, so in, in essence, what he is saying is, what we do for Christ is what's going to last. Things that we do for ourselves are going to fade away and disappear. But the things that you do for Christ will last forever. Not only on this side, but the things that we do for Christ if we're able to cross over on the other side and live with him, those same things that we've done over here will be faithful to him over on the other side. Live the best that you can. If you have to set some boundaries, set some godly boundaries in your life. The kind of boundaries, ask God, God, are you pleased with the boundaries that I have set in my life? But you must set them pleasing to God. Live the best that you can. In the day in which we live, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but as I always say, I know who holds tomorrow. This virus, when God decides to lift it, he will lift it. If he doesn't decide to lift it, and we all, I don't know, hopefully they'll get to a place, I haven't heard of a place in this area where they're testing people to see if they have the virus, but I think uh, we all may have to do that before we get back together. And it wouldn't be a bad thing to get tested. I was listening earlier this morning at one of our pastors at Enon Baptist Church. He was tested positive. So we don't know what, where and where. Because a lot of times, I, I don't think, also thinking about some of you who live in, in Philadelphia, your houses are close together, very close together. And it's kind of hard 
to keep a distance when you live that close. You come out of your door and somebody next door is right close to you, live within five feet of you, come out of that same door. So it's kind of hard when you're living in close, what you call it? Con Social climbs, close, close proximity. Yes, that's the one on, close proximity. So it's kind of hard to live, uh, be safe. But be as safe as you can and live the best that you know how, and God will do the rest. Amen? I love you all, and I miss you very, very, very much. All right? I, good to see you on, on tube this morning. <laughs> God bless you. I love you all, and praise God. Let me close with a closing prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you for the few words that you have given me to share with your people this morning. I don't know why many of them don't. We're not, we're not in church. So I wonder why we can't gather at our home and why we are bringing this broadcast to them. All you have to do is open up your phone, open up your, Laptop. your laptops, and whatever you have there, uh, and, 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 listen, and listen and look, and, and we can fellowship this way. Amen? Do the best you can and open up your hearts and let's live together. Let's socialize together in the way that we can. Amen? God, God bless you, and I love you from the bottom of my heart. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. See you too. See you next week. Lord will.